Oh, oh, goodness me, just running a bit late today, sorry about that. Yes, I'm a, I'd noticed that when I was, uh, I fixed the Queen this morning, I used a, uh, I used a ruler from Home Depot, like a wooden ruler, which I'd purchased and then realised when I got into the office this morning that Ava has, uh, she's done a Salvador Dali on the old Queen there. <laughs> so um, either she did it or the dog did it. Anyway, what are you going to do? I'm going to play a little bit. We were both running late this morning. Ava's uh, in, still drying her hair, which could take hours. And um, we're going to Vegas for my birthday, so we just... <laughs> I mean, you can see I'm having a bit of a bad hair day myself. I haven't had a haircut in ages because I don't want to go to the hairdressers. I'm nervous about it, you know. Hopefully this is all audible to you. Uh, I hope you're well. Welcome. Hello. It's the pageant the mattress again. And... Uh, <laughs> Welcome to our little, our world. It's like a little reality show, isn't it? I hadn't thought of it that way before, but it is in a way. Um, anyway, Ava will be in a sec, so I'll play a song. Get us going. How about little, uh, little, little Neil Finn? Okay, here we go. It's not what you think of when you th when you think about doing your trade, you know, playing in front of people. You think you know you've got to be very organised, and they should never see, never break down the fourth wall. But there's, there aren't any walls. <laughs> this thing I'm really close tonight feel like I'm moving inside her lying in the dark think I'm beginning to know her let it go I'll be waiting when you call whenever I fall I your feet and let your tears come rain down on me whenever I touch slow turning pain when you love for me now I'll just come on willing to offer myself you want my presence or need my help Who knows where that might lead You are hiding from me now Something in the way that you're talking And the words don't sound right Feel you moving inside Oh girl Waiting when you call Whenever I fall At your feet And let your tears Come rain down on me Whenever I touch Slow turning pain Oh, the figure of flame will fall and I'm more than willing to offer myself Do you want my presence or need my help? Who knows where the might leads I fall Whenever I fall Whenever I fall
Well, I hope it sounds good where you are. It's hard to tell, you know, difficult for me to tell, but so I, I generally ask if you could just let me know if it sounds like shit, because if it does, I'd like to know. Do us a favour, would you? Would you uh, share this uh, show with your friends? That would be very helpful. I'd like to get this the word out about it. It's the pageant of the mattress. We're calling it number 55 because tomorrow will be the 55th anniversary of the day my mother gave birth to me. So um, rather than celebrating it for my personal self, I'm going to go to Las Vegas. I'm going to take the wife. We're going to go to Las Vegas. And uh, and we're going to uh, go see my mum, who lives in Las Vegas, and uh, celebrate for her. So it's all, that's what it's all about. Because she she's the one who was legs akimbo 55 years ago. I didn't do very much, you know, except complain bitterly, you know, when I came, popped out, probably cried, coughed and cried. And the nurse went, black, whacked me on the bum and said, don't you ever go in there again. And I never did. So uh, you'll be happy to know. <laughs> Let's not dwell too much on that. And uh, yeah, so I'm quite excited about it, really. Uh, is that the mother of our Lord and Saviour who died for your sins, Jason? He died for everybody, but mostly yours. Thank you, John. If you're not familiar with John Troy, Tuesday afternoons at four o'clock on Facebook Live, you can find John Troy, Taco Troy's Days. And it's very amusing. And he always tells one very good joke, whereas I tell a number of really poor jokes, but I get them from you. So if you would be so kind as to send us some two-liner dad jokes, it really makes our day and uh, it's fun to share with everybody. Yeah, I like to go see my mum on my birthday. That's my thing, uh, Nicola. Um, she's, uh, she's doing all right, actually. She's, how old is she now? She was 23 when I was born, so she's 78. Coming on 79. Good grief. No, she's tw 77, coming on 78. Something like that, anyway. She was born in April 42, so you work it out. And uh, she's uh, she's all right, yeah. She's, you know, husband's not very well, so she's, she's you know, stuck at home a lot of the time. But we're going to take her out, and we're going to go out for Korean barbecue, which I've never had. Any, I've never had Korean barbecue. Uh, I believe it's very good. My brother is dating a girl who is from Korea. So, uh, so yeah, so that'll be great. We're gonna, she'll take us out to her favourite spot. With any luck, it'll be dead good. We're staying at a half-decent hotel near, my, near where they live, you know, not on the strip down there. And we, we go to Vegas a lot. And I know it sounds exotic and everything, maybe if you've never been, but it's really, it's, it's actually a shithole. Vegas so uh, if you like trees and nature and and, uh, and decent weather it's not a great place if you like casinos and drinking and uh, city bars then you it's great if that's what you're into you know? I don't have a moral judgment although I, I clearly uh, looks down my nose at people who are into that kind of thing I'm gonna play some more because I'm just talking way too much sting Oh, I could do that. That's a good song, that. I've been playing that a little bit. I did a couple of gigs this week, actual gigs outdoors on patios, and uh, and people requested it, and I played it. I'll, I'm happy to do that, yes. Uh, Carrie. Yes, Carrie. Carrie was there at one of them. Right, so there's an elastic band right over your name because the, the way the phone's being held up, so I couldn't quite see who it was. All right, very good. Let's see. Stan. Sting. Sting, who's... Uh, crew call him Stan behind his back hold on St oh it's not there maybe it's under I as in if you love somebody set them free yeah here it is it's kind of cool song yeah you know I generally don't like songs that tell you to do something generally my whole thing is I don't like songs that say you know let love rule or you know be better at that, or love everyone, or uh, stuff like that. I don't like that kind of thing. I don't like to be told what to do by songwriters. <laughs> but this is a good uh, idea. Anyway. If you need... Oh, let's do this. If you need somebody... 
call my name If you want someone You can do the same If you want to keep something precious Better lock it up and throw away the key Wanna hold on to your possessions Don't even think about me If you love somebody If you love someone If you love somebody If you love someone Set them free Set them free If it's a mirror that you want Look into my eyes Oh, whipping boy Someone to despise Oh, prisoner in the dark Change you just can't see Oh, a beast in a gilded cage Some people don't want to be here If you love somebody If you love someone if you love somebody If you love someone Set them free Set them free Set them free Set them free You can control your independent hearts can't tell the one you love apart Forever conditioned to believe that we can live Live here and be happy with less So many riches, so many souls How can we be and that we want to possess If you need somebody Oh, call my name if you want someone You can do, you can do, you can do the same If you want to keep something precious Gotta lock it up and throw away the key If you want to hold on to your possession Don't even think about me If you love somebody If you love someone if you love somebody If you love someone Set them free, free Set them free, set them free Free, set them free Free, free, set them free Free, free, set them free Kind of just learning that song. <laughs> There's a couple of bonkers chords in there that I don't know where they came from. And then there was a moment where I sang, uh, "Get a leg up and throw away the key." So I reminded myself of uh, Vic Reeves, you know, doing the uh, club singer thing. Get a leg up and throw away the key. Yeah, thank you very much. Great song though. Nice one, Carrie. Thank you for uh, for suggesting it. Because I say I don't normally like that kind of song, but I think that's a great idea. If you love somebody, you set them free. It's a good idea. How does one really achieve that, though? Because you want more from your relationship with your partner than you want from, say, just your friend down the road, don't you? You want something different from them. I don't know. It's whoosh, lifelong journey. Doing my best. <laughs> How you doing, Ave? Ave. Are you nearly ready? No, she says she's not nearly ready. Oh well. <laughs> what was he saying? Leave them. <laughs> That's the best way, yeah, you're right. That's the best way. Anyway, I don't know. I can't uh, I can't say I'm an expert. Although, you know, Ava and I have been together what, ten years now? John 
say? <laughs> he say die. That's that's the kind of thing John would say. I couldn't. I can't read all the comments because I, I it's on my phone. And Ava's not here. Ava's the one. You what, love? Oh, that's nice of him. Thanks, Sir John. Thanks, Sir John. Oh, we should talk about the royal family. Look at there's the Queen there. Uh, and then there's uh, that. That's not a comment, right? By the way, that mustache is apropos of nothing. That mustache that's on that queen is uh, is just a funny thing that the beard and stuff. It's just Ava thinks it's funny, but um, I must say I don't. <laughs> there's something like it's in my blood to go. That's disrespectful. And she's way more British than I am, so I don't know. That I can't explain that either. But uh, it's not a comment on what's going on. You know, it's not topical about what's happening with Harry and uh, Meghan. Is that her name, Meghan? And uh, apparently they've been cut off. You know, they were loved so much that the royal family have set them free, have they not, from, uh, you know, anything. Is he still a prince, even? I don't know. Lucky enough to start his new job tomorrow, Chris says, after a year of now. I am happy. I can't do it. I can't. We'll have to... Ava's going to have to... Uh, do comments. I'm just going to yak on, all right, <laughs> and play songs. And if I see something go by, I will. What's he saying? He's happy about. Oh yeah, I can do man on a string. I'm going to do it now. And I'm con and obviously, you know, I've talked to we've talked to Chris, and we know this. We've expressed our... Delight that he's got a new job. And I uh, want to dis express delight at anybody who's got anything new going on this week. It's uh, nice to have new things. Things to look forward to. I always think we, we sort of... we. There's a discussion, isn't there, about people that live out of their past. Like they say, I behave this way because of my past. But I think people... I think it's also true to say, and maybe this is a contradiction, that we live into our futures. Like, you know, if you've something good's happening, well, I'm excited about seeing my mum and my brother. So I'm feeling pretty good right now because, you know, because there's something in the future good going to happen. I don't know. It's a thing, isn't it? Live. Uh, you can take that to the bank. It's a thing. Uh, okay. Song there. Man on a string. Let's find these. That's right. That's why I can't find it. Song about the dog. This is a song that uh, Chris is referring to. And his uh, missive. Song about the dog, really. But um, we've been recording it. It's going to be good. It's going to be really good. Uh, it's just a guitar vocal right now, but it's going to put we're going to put drums on it, and it's going to be great. Okay. What the hell that is? In the park, in the soft green grass, she melts every heart, everyone we pass. Lying on the ground in a secret place we found, playing in the sun when the shadows fall. Run and run and run, gotta catch them all. Though I'm right behind her everywhere, she will turn to check that I'm still there. I am a man on a string, and now I know I can only go where 
where she wants to And if she turns on a whim I will follow, follow I'm with her all day long and I see You might think I'm trapped beside her Now I'm home and felt so free Now that I am a man on a string Man on a string I love my work, I love my life I love my home, my friends, my wife Love the love that binds us all We all agree she fits right in It's like we're all tied up with string Look at her coming when we call Come to you when she comes to me. Running up the hill to the willow tree. I think if we watch her carefully, she will show us all we need to be. I am a man on a string, and I know I can only go where she wants to. And if she turns on a whim, I will follow, follow. I'm with her all day long and I see. You might think I'm trapped beside her. I never felt so free as I do. Now that I am a man on a string. Man on a string. Man on a string. So yeah, Mara String. I've been we've been recording. It's been really, really fun, and I think this record's going to sound great. And uh, so far, there are no love songs on it, really, ap apart from that one. If you consider that a love song for the dog. Um, so uh, aside from that song, I'm, I'm I'm trying to write a song for Ava. Apart from that, it's it's going to be sort of love song free. This record, pretty much, as far as I can tell. Apart from a sort of Love Songs for Mankind. Ooh, there's a good name, title. Cheesy title for the record. But, um, yeah, that's what... Uh, thank you, David. Thank you for that. Um, so those that... Uh, so these are all sort of new songs, or song, recently written songs. Anyway, that's probably the oldest of the songs, because I wrote that in 2019 in New York. Or at least began it. So these, a lot of these songs just sort of take a little time to, to craft... There's a, a fantastic book by John Cleese called Creativity, which I swear, if, you, if you're a creative person, it's really worth having a look at this book. And uh, one of the things he talks about is something that I've talked about a lot and others have mentioned to me before, um, which is that you can often solve a problem in a, in a creative process by stepping away, all right? Or going to sleep, even. My, a, friend, a friend of mine who's a wonderful guitar player a trained under Segovia called Eric Henderson lives around here. He says practice plus sleep equals, I think he says excellence. So practice plus sleep. So you should never overdo it. You should never work for 10. I've been working with this guy on a song. And he's an amateur songwriter and I'm helping him to put, get his song together. And he does 10 hour stretches. And I'm like, man, you're not, you were really not being productive at 10 hours. An hour and a half, and then go do something else. Watch TV, make up a tea for ten minutes. There's a great story about Glenn Fry and uh, I think it's Glenn Fry. Who's the other guy in the Eagles? Henderson, Hen Henson. Hen anyway, never mind. Whatever it is, so Glenn Fry was living beneath this guy uh, in Laurel Canyon in the '60s, and he used to hear him. No, no, no. It was Glenn Fry and uh... oh fuck, you know what? I can find out. Anyway, very famous songwriter. And he's I have a terrible memory for this shit. 
But I remember the stories, I just don't remember the names. So the so living a, and used to hear him plunking away on the piano for about an hour and a half. <coughs> and then he'd hear the kettle boil. And this happened all day long. Playing kettle, playing kettle. Don Henley. It was Don Henley and somebody else upstairs. It wasn't Glenn Fry. Somebody very famous. He wrote... Uh, I'll find out in a minute. Don't matter. So, John Troy, practice plus a wank. We're perfect. If you cannot... The trouble with wanking is the older you get, the longer it takes. So, you know, you don't want to be taking an hour off every hour. That doesn't work, John. Anyway, don't worry about the name. It doesn't matter. It wasn't Joe Walsh, no. <laughs> it was somebody who wasn't in the Eagles. Damn it. All right, I'll tell you. I'll find out. I'm having to look at my iPad. I'm not doing it now. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Here's another one that's going to be on the record. It used to be called, it started out, it was called Oh, this song. Don't worry about who it was. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who it was. But the point is of that thing of taking a, anyway, that song, that Man on a String song, that's taken a long time to get to the point where, okay, it's now, it's, it really does feel like it's settled, like it's set, like a gold ingot. Uh, not a bad, uh, analogy that because it's still a bit malleable you know <coughs> it might change again over the years but this is a song called um, joy mining the more i think of joy mining it may be a good name for an album it just doesn't trip off my tongue very well joy mining because it's got that diphthong at the end of the first word but odd anyway it was jam mining or ja marmalade mining. That <laughs> no, Steve, that's exactly my point. It'll come to me in a minute. Darkness covers the London ocean And nothing left but dreams and emotion And there's no hiding from the sirens calling And the old sensation of always falling Well, all there is is the music that you In the morning, eight in the evening, 
I remember you were awesome at not doing what? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I can't, I'm, I'd love to see what you're saying. I'm sure you're taking the piss beautifully, but I can't, I can't read the uh, stuff. Ava will be in in a minute and she will, um, she will humiliate me on your behalf. So, uh, <laughs> but I, that song is, uh, that song is, uh, was finished and I went in the studio to record it. I made it nice as I've, I wrote a really good, uh, I think, really good um, string arrangement for uh, for uh, for that song, and because I can do it here at the house, I've got this little keyboard down here, I can write the string arrangement, and then um, and then the sounds get changed in the in the real studio, and it becomes a you know it'll sound glorious, you know, hopefully, and uh, it's got a sort of Nick Drake thing about it that I like. Um, I sent it to one guy, and he said. Look at you, John Williams. And I was like, Ugh, I don't want to sound like John Williams, but it sounds like, uh, it's not like film music. Anyway, I think it's quite lovely. I like it. Ava thinks it's good, so we so that's good. If Ava thinks it's good, we're good. And uh, I wrote this string arrangement for it, and um, I went and shooter to sing it. Because now that the guitars are done, sounds great. Some ba upright bass on it. Ooh, not sure about percussion, whatever, but... Going to sing it, and I'm singing it. And I'm going. There's something wrong with this song, and I'm trying to figure out, trying to figure out. And I finally it came to me that what I was singing was, I was singing, oh, joy mine in, oh, joy mine in. And it wasn't, it wasn't, it was apropos of nothing. Like that line, although it, you it, obviously it, it means something, but it sort of didn't, it didn't. Re it felt like something that was too standalone from the verses. So I inserted the word weir. Weir, if you're American. Weir. So, oh, we're joy mining. Oh, we're joy mining. And you liked it, didn't you, Aves? Much better. She said it was much better, yeah. You need a microphone, Ruth. Oh, yeah. I forgot to set you up. Oh, hello, Mrs. Pickles. Mrs. Pickles is here too, you can't see her. Would you like to go on the bed, Pix? Go on. Go on. Oh, she missed it. Go on then, there you go. There she is. Um, so weird joy mining made it like, you know, sort of universal. So it was good, much better. Just that one little thing can really make the difference. Stuff like that. Is songwriting. Lewis is here. Lewis? Yeah. Hi, Lewis. Here, take that to Russell and Robin. Let me just find out what you... How much you need? There's a the thing. There you go. We're a bit. We're once again. We're a little bit uh, upside down here, because this week it's because we're we're going to. Uh, we're going to Vegas in a minute. Going to Vegas, yeah. Uh, see my mum, my brother, because it's my birthday tomorrow. And uh, it's really a celebration for my mum, not for me, because fifty-five years ago. You know, she did all the work, didn't she? Her and that and that n nice lady nurse. The lady nurse. That's uh, now we don't know what happened to her, but she was there was a big uh, woman from the Caribbean, had a strong Caribbean accent, 
and she, she said uh, my dad would complain because it was born at like two o'clock in the morning and the nurse said well the, when the lord plants them the lord reaps them that's the mildly racist uh, story i was always told anyway it's not racist is it if she'd been norwegian i would said would that be racist she's from the caribbean so she had that accent no, I don't think so, but, you know, I'm not woke. Oh, it's so difficult these days to be, you You're know. just doing an accent, aren't you? You're just playing. I, th I think so. Playing at what other people sound like. And I, I appreciate know. that, nurse. I'm glad she was there. Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> I'm lucky. Are you all right, Ave? Let's see what Steve's saying, because it's always important. What are people saying? <laughs> Steve says in other news this week I've watched a lot of profession <laughs> professional shows done on Zoom and the like and I have to be honest this one is actually so slick <laughs> so, so slick in comparison really? <laughs> <laughs> well you know the truth is that we were on the radio for a few years me and Ava so we, we know how to sort I'm of just gonna tell you all keep something. things going I had what? a very funny conversation with my mother this week um, because she gets irritated very easily as, no. as do I and we had this hilarious conversation that about... That apple didn't fall far from the tree, did it? Particularly about... Um, she gets irritated with noises. Ah. And it turns out it is a syndrome. I think yes, that's it's a, a syndrome. Bit, I think that's a bit called misophonia. Misophonia. Or maybe it's misophonia. Miso meaning hate and phonia meaning sound. I thought when she said it was misophonia, I thought it was someone who hears Japanese soup. <laughs> Or misophobia, someone misophobia, who hates Japanese, Japanese soup. soup. <laughs> um, and so it's a pathology, isn't it? It's not. Uh, it's yeah, a, it's a it, thing. It's and a, some people have it worse than others, and we definitely have it to our family. Like she's always saying to her, that her partner Malcolm is the sweetest man, but she's always going, "Stop sniffing!" <laughs> I'm just trying to get you to say it. <laughs> Stop sniffing. Um, and apparently, on this morning, there'd been a. Segment. They'd done a segment. Is a that segment. what you call it? They'd yes. done a segment on it. And Ruth yeah. with Ruth and Eamon Holmes. Ugh. And, and Ruth Holmes. Ugh. Has can't this, stand him. Has he looks odd these Eamon days? Eamon Holmes always looked odd to me. No, he look, I don't know what Ruth Holmes is. I don't know who she's she is. his wife, and she's she's quite I've never nice. Seen her. But I have to say, so I watched the segment. And I, I he's work, got a big face, hasn't he? Yes, and now his hair's white, and he, mm. his face looks all rubbery. He looks like your old auntie rather than. <laughs> anyway, um. I could go on about misophonia, but I shan't. Go on. The reason I mention it is yes. because, you know, they're a married couple and they do this presenting thing. They were horrible. They were horrible to each they other. They were horrible to it, sniping all the time. It made me feel really uncomfortable. We're much better. Well, we're much nicer. Yeah, we don't do that even not, you know. We're, we, we're, the way we are now is pretty much the way we are in normal times. So we had a Less big lipstick. row before the show. We had a big row to get uh, over it before... Um, Coming to see you guys, obviously. Yes, otherwise it would. You don't want to show up at somebody's house, which we are now, you know, in a bad mood. But we kiss and make up very quickly. Very We're not, quickly. Our, and uh, it was all Jason's fault. So <laughs> our recovery time <coughs> is, has, has reduced over the years. That's the important thing. You're always going to have fights because it's roommate shit mostly. <laughs> yeah. And it's so. <laughs> it, but really you, is. it is. Even if it's just things you say or the way you say them. Well, it's that. It's being irritated, isn't it? Yeah, but you, you're with somebody the whole time. There's no escape, is there? No. You know. <laughs> There's no escape. Help me. Anyway, four Help hours me. in a car to Vegas. Woo. Oh, we'll put the radio on. We'll have podcasts. Be great. That's the thing about the drive to Vegas, by the way. It, I'm saying it's, uh, it's no big deal, no, 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 whatever, because we're so blasé about, you know, living here now. But... It is a brilliant drive because it's, it's obviously through the desert and the tr mountains. and Yeah, and it used to be busy sort of on a Sunday evening because it was people going back, wasn't it? No, from... and it's never it's always not, not as busy going that way. Oh, was it the other way? It's people yeah, coming back sense. from Vegas to that LA. That makes sense. Yeah. Anyway, nobody's going anywhere right now, so. Fingers crossed it's not going to be too busy, the drive, because that's a pain in the ass. Because it's, it's a two-lane highway. Think about this. I mean, literally, it's I mean one lane either side at, for a lot of it. No, two lanes. I no, don't know, but we're, look, we're, we're chatting away, ignoring everybody. Sorry, I everybody. should be playing something. No, I just want to tell you that yes. Dean just ordered the John Cleese book. Excellent. Dean, you're going to love it. You can read it. It'll take you an hour and a half to read it, or an hour to read it. And it's, uh, you know, he's, he sums up 
a lot of the stuff that's very important, you know, and he says it in ways that I went, oh, that's right. I, now I've got a new way to say it to the people. I'm working with people on songs, amateurs, and helping them to be creative. And the process itself, over the years, you figure it out, right? He, he's figured it out. But he says it in such a succinct way, and it's not just comedy. You know, he's, he's a lovely guy, really. Fantastic. And uh, uh, National Treasure... But it's not just about it's not just about him being funny about creative. It's really um, it's really uh, poignant. It's just some great, really good information. If you if what you want to be is creative. Really um, so there's that. Yeah. Um, oh, going back, going back when you were talking about going about saying is that racist? That racist. Lewis says I don't know. I'm from Yorkshire, and they'll take the mick out of us. <laughs> Very true. You said it was xenophobic, not racist. Oh, it's not hard. Dylan says it's not hard. The rule is if you would be em the rule is if you would be embarrassed to say it in front of her. Ah, yes. No, I would not be embarrassed. I'd be <coughs> delighted. I'd like to give her a big hug and say, "When the Lord plants them, the Lord reaps them," and we both burst out into laughter and go and eat plantain or something. I'd be delighted. I don't care. Oh dear. I'm not embarrassed. I think racists are not embarrassed. I've seen some videos online of racist people, mostly Karens in gas stations having to go at Mexicans or whatever uh, and, and they're just not embarrassed in the least like I'm going how would you dare say that to another human being right they're right, not embarrassed right right if you're asking is it racist it probably, <laughs> it probably is though <laughs> well um, oh Daniel Barnes uh, says uh, first of all Chris so. also saw that segment and said it was odd good uh, not just me then which segment you know about well, the, the uh, misophonia uh, uh, Misophonia, misophonia, whatever. Yeah. And Daniel Barnes says, Eamon, I could tell you a tale about him that would probably end his career. Come on, then. Well, that's what, this is what this is all about. That's what this show is. You're Celebrity a, gossip. You're that's what we want. <laughs> that's what we're trying to do, ruin the careers of... of, 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 of uh, we're <laughs> jealous of successful people. It would be an opening, therefore... then, on ITV for us. I'd love to present this morning. You always get a snack because there's always somebody doing a food. Right, and it's in the morning thing. as well. I bet it's a good. I bet they do breakfast. Actually. Do you know what it was? That, that I mean, I haven't watched it in years, but I watched. I watched it the other day because my mum said, "Do you know what the food <laughs> item was?" Go on. Somebody who was um, create who was coming up with a different crisp sandwich every day, but. They were like gourmet crisp sandwich. Oh, I don't crisps mean and something else. Yes. In particular yes. kinds of yes. bread. Yes. Very it nice. Look very good. I love a crisp sandwich. I do too. <coughs> I've, got, I've got to get a drink of water. Wonder bread, margarine, crisps, salad cream. That's what I remember from crisp sandwiches. I'll ask him, Lewis. I think it's disgusting. Lewis yeah. is saying, any chance of playing Man of Constant Sorrow? Yeah. Why not? I'm, I've never played that on this, uh, on this show. You could ruin my career. Any one of you could ruin my career if it was if I was, you know, famous. Any one of you has got a story about me and what a dick I've been in my life. So you know, I don't know why I don't know why we care. Do you know what I mean? Harry and Meghan. Let's talk about that in a minute, shall we? Sure. Um, and Greg, salad cream, Tommy K. I don't know what that means, Lewis. Can you explain further? Maybe it's some. Oh, salad cream and Tommy K on your crisp sandwich. Got it. Um, Greg Bishop. No. Pickles is not coming to Vegas this time. It's the first time we shall be leaving. We usually her at home. take her with her, but not this time, though. It's, 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 do you know what? It's selfish of us because we love having the dog there, but it's not a brilliant trip for her. She has to sit in the car for four hours. She doesn't know anybody. My brother's got a little dog. My mother's got a cat. You know, she's to stay in a hotel where she, you know, Stressful the noises are weird, you know, and all that. And so she's not into it. Ian McLean says Harry and Max will probably replace Eamon. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be surprised, and that pisses me off. They should get jobs. Yeah, they should. Get a proper job. <laughs> I've, got, I've, got, I've got to get a, a choking. What's the song you want to do before you, before you Man go of down? Constant Sorrow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a song, uh, it's an old, uh, I think. It's an old song. An old country song, but uh, it was in that movie, uh, Old Brother, where. Uh, what is it? Where are they? Yeah. George Clooney, very good film. Coen Brothers, I think. It was a Greek myth, the movie, The Odyssey. Um, anyway, this song is uh, was from that film. 
I believe the band were called the Soggy Bottom Boys. Amazing what you do remember, isn't it? And I can't remember the name of that songwriter. Damn. If you've just arrived, don't worry about it. You didn't miss anything, you're good. For this song, get this into you. Get into it's the Marlboros. I've had so many years this. of Marlboros. That's why. Apparently, we're we're, we're wrong way around. Back to front yeah, aves. Well, I think I can fix that. Does it, it doesn't matter. No, no, uh, it bothers me. Oh. We mustn't bother. We mustn't bother Dean. No, because we're not That's it. I think I've done it. Fixed it. Is that right? Yeah, I usually check uh, the words playtime on that poster behind you, but I can't see it now. Now we can't see it. It doesn't matter, it's fine. Okay, John <coughs> says the Soggy Bottom Boys yeah, soggy bottom boy. was what Clooney's character called the group. The song was actually sung by Dan Timinski. Okay, thank you. Alumnus of Union Station. Oh, really? Wow. But is it, and is it an old song, John? Is it like a, like a classic old American song? You would know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, is everybody all right? Has it been a, what kind of a week has it been for you guys? I've had an up and down week. I've had some good times though. Some, <laughs> some good times. 
Good times. Good times. No, I have. You know what I mean? It's not been like a terrible week. In my head, I'm talking about. Like, obviously, we're, I'm okay. We've got a roof over our head. The dog's fine. You're sitting up straight. <laughs> we've had, we've, had to prop myself We've had up. breakfast. You know, we've got enough gas in the car to get to Vegas. We're not. We're doing all right. But in my head, uh, it's been a bit up and down, a little bit, but not terrible. Just saying. I've had moments, you know, where it's been like, it's hard to get out of bed some mornings this week. You've been up and you, you were up and at him. You've been for a lot of walks, haven't you? You've been for long walks this week, eh? Yeah, yeah, six miles yesterday. That, right, but that's, that's our, our regular that's to the our, cave that's, and back. That's my walk too. I like that walk. You I haven't done it this week though. Are you sure? Oh, maybe I did. Didn't I you did do it with, with Zach. Oh no, that was last week. That was a week. It was before. Friday. No. Yeah. That's no, I haven't done it. It's time to. I played tennis a few times. Exercise very good for my head. Really good. So I played tennis three times and been out for a walk with the dog. I walked the dog around the lake on Tuesday or something when you went. Oh out. yeah, well no, we went together around the lake. Did we? Yeah. Mm. You spent the whole time talking on the phone. Don't you remember? I spent some time talking and then I said to whoever it was, I've got to go, my wife's here. <laughs> it wasn't the whole time. <laughs> I remember saying I've got to go. I feel like I'm missing the walk. I did say that. Yeah. 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 I was talking to Scree, actually, Dean. Talked to Scree this week a bit. I was talking to my old friend Jonathan Barrett from Officer Dibble. Um, and we've been, I would say, we've been recording. The record's going to be great, and I really hope you'll all... Um, I don't know, how How do you release a record these days? Do you release it as an album? Do you even make a CD? I may even not do that. I might just do some videos, rather, spend the money on videos rather than manufacturing. Well, what sort of videos? I don't know. Maybe I'll get a... Just do something interesting, like do maybe get... I'm, I'd really like to get our friend's son to do um, some animation. It, you know those animations that he's oh, been doing? Oh, I know, doing? they take forever. It takes him forever. I mean, they're brilliant. I know, but I'd do something really, we could do something simple that doesn't take forever. Just a boat floating on, on the sea for three minutes while the song's going. You know what I mean? Just something simple like that, but classy. Something slick, to coin a phrase. <laughs> uh, well. I want it to be good, you know. And I, was, I, mean, I, I also have another idea about doing, doing wow. some more of those. You know those videos I did in that white room? Yeah. Doing something with that guy. Um, I don't know. The, so John Troy says, first recorded by Dick Burnett in 1913. Right, so that is quite old, isn't it? It's 100 years old. And Doug, thing. who's watching, um, says, check your email. Obviously not now. Um, <laughs> says, do you know Rocky Top, Tennessee? No, I don't. But I bet John Troy does. And that's why you should tune into his show on a Tuesday afternoon at four o'clock. Taco Troy's days. John Troy, spelt as exactly how it sounds. J O H N T R O Y. John Troy. Steve says he'd rather have a CD, and Dylan says, "Will you put the album on Spotify?" Yeah, of course, it'll go on Spotify, and that's what I'm thinking. Why? Why would you make a CD? What for? It's expensive. You know what I mean? Well, not that expensive, but the printing and all the nonsense. I don't know, but I'd, of course, I love sleeve notes. I love records. You know. Like, it's that record on the wall there. Because that never gets played or, or anything because it's in a frame. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. If you've got ideas, send them to me. Please do send me pr private messages. Please do tip. There's a tip thing above my head here somewhere. Um, it's my birthday. But please do tip. If you can afford to do that, I'd appreciate that very much. Um, and join me on... Uh, join me on Patreon. P A T R E O N, patreon.com, and search for my name, Jason Feddy, because that I'm doing stuff like putting stuff out that you can, you're not going to get it anywhere else. You know, it's like some old footage and photographs and a blog, and uh, I'm going to do. You're right there. I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to do mixes. Rough. Uh, some of these mixes of these songs before they're finished are great. There's one uh, song called "We Will Be Together." which I've played for you before, and uh, I sent it to this guy, Dave Witham, a friend of ours, Dave, who is my cocker band. He's in a Joe Cocker tribute band. Um, and he killed it, man. It does. It sounds great. <laughs> he nailed it. I mean, he's he's he was George Benson's MD, and I, <laughs> I'm telling you this. He was in Barbara Streisand's band last year and the year before. I'm telling you that not to make... It sounds like I'm sort of name-dropping, right? Doesn't it? 
It does. There's no way and around it's it. Not the first time you've mentioned it. Because I'm, I'm, st- because I want you to know how great it is. It's hard for me to. St- Maybe I shouldn't even say anything. Just be cool. Should I just be cool? Yeah. Should just be cool, yeah. shouldn't I? Jimmy Hull says, "A up." A up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who Jimmy is. Do I know Jimmy? Well, there's a little picture of him here, and it looks like he's in the blues bar. I'm going to see. Then it's then it's Jimmy Hall from the blues bar. Isn't it? Um, let me check that. Let me see if we do know Jimmy Hall. I'm terrible with names. I'll look at his face and I'll go, ah, Jimmy Hall. I'm going to find him for you. Would you please? Yeah. Sorry. So, yeah, I should just be cool because, but, and and I'll tell you a great story. So, when I was uh, looking for a sax player for the band, for the Cocker Band, and it's a specific thing, you know, you can't, not anybody can do this gig. There are lots of great jazz sax players around here some really proficient guys, but they're not, they can't do what you need for that band. So I put on Facebook, put this thing, it said, sax player required, and we'd already auditioned a load of people, sax player required, uh, must be able to squeak and honk. So some people were suggesting a particular guy, and his name was Jimmy Z, and he became the sax player in the band. And uh, Jimmy's been in lots of bands, and he's been in lots of very big, famous bands, trying not to name drop now but you know he played at Live Aid this guy so I, I get this thing and uh, and it's and, I, and, and he writes to me uh, call me or something and I start telling him like oh the keyboard player was in Streisand's band and, the, uh, and he goes he just said this he went like this I don't care who they've played with can they fucking play <laughs> see he's a cool guy cooler than me um I must say I'm a little embarrassed now. No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I just found Jimmy Cringing, Hall. cringing. No, and I've lost him again. I've lost him. I've lost him. Hang on. I'll play another song. Here he is, here he is, here he is, here he is, here he is. He's dr- his drummer. Oh. He's got his head down. I'll find you a better one. That's. That, look at this, look. <laughs> How am I supposed to know who that is? He's, well, he's younger than me, isn't he? He's younger than you, yeah. He's got very nice hair. Mm, well, so have you when, when you get it cut. Here he is, look. Oh, now he's got his head to the side. <laughs> oh, no, I do know. Of course I know. <laughs> Hello, mate. <laughs> yes, I do know, yeah. Hello, Jimmy Hall. How funny. Talking of Harrogate musicians, Jed Thomas wrote to me this morning. Do you know who he is? Um... He's a blues guy. He's a real Harrogate blues man. I'm talking of Harrogate, Harrogate artistes. I've watched um, Hugo Spear all week on the new the new series of Marcella. Oh yeah. Yeah. How is he? He's very good. I haven't got to the end. I'm a bit confused. But yeah, he's he's good. Great. Looking old, but good. Well, he's old, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I know everybody's saying that about me. It's fine. It's fine. Everybody's old. I could look. I'd look ginormous on here today. Like proper big. Um, what else should we do? Should we have some other songs? Would you like to make a request and then I'll do it? Let's make a request. Send us a dad joke and please tip. And also uh, hit share, please. And also uh, those little heart things you can make go on the thing. Good for the algorithm, whatever that is. But apparently it's good. So that's my requests. Ha- Sh- I watched this thing, by the way, this week. Oh, I'll tell you a minute. I need, to, I need requests. Disney. Do you know the difference between uh, Bing Crosby and Walt Disney? No, I don't. Bing sings and Walt Disney. <laughs> so he's Scottish joke. Hey, a Scottish joke. That's very good. Starstruck and spellbound. Done. Done. You got it. And then I want to talk about something I want to say. What? About something. Oh, I've still got that one. Starstruck and spellbound. Really terrible name for a club act, isn't it? Hi, I'm Starstruck and he's spellbound. Good evening and thank you very much, please. Thank you, please. It'll come up on my thing in a minute. Larry wants to know if we share the driving to Vegas. Sometimes. 
Sometimes he goes one way, I come back. We're in the same car, though. <laughs> <coughs> So, uh, yeah, this is a song, isn't it? This is the last record I made with uh, with Al, who I'm making this new record with. Um, I wrote this in the studio, I think. At least it was definitely finished the day we recorded it, you know, one of those. Sometimes it works out. Sometimes it's best that way. I think it's pretty good. But then I would say that, wouldn't I? Did I tell you that my keyboard player used to play with Barbara Streisand? Sky is expanding in every direction. Out there forever, it's unbearable. Just for one moment. Stand here together Starstruck and spellbound In the light of it all oh. Where are you going? My old friend Did you find the meaning Something To depend on Do you believe in love Will you Still feel The goal Will you be ready when the train Is set to go the sky is expanding in every direction out there forever unbearable Just for one moment We stand here together Starstruck and spell Bound In the light of it all
I'd like to do that song with Brian Cox, Professor Brian Cox on the keyboards. Didn't he inspire that song? He did song. inspire it. Yeah. Wouldn't it be great to have him play a dodgy old DX7 like he used to play in that band Dream? Dream. Oh my god. Things that... can only get better. The, well, that was the that was the that was the theme tune for the Labour Party, wasn't it? The theme tune, yeah. <laughs> they didn't know, did they? Well, no. It was Neil Kinnock, you know. Um Lewis says, Lewis Van. Yeah. Is saying, do you, can you, oh, what was it called? It was a, it was a Elvis song. I've lost it now. Mm. If I Can Dream. Do you know If I Can Dream? No, but I do know an Elvis song that I've never played. Let me play this. Let me play this. Let me play this for you. I want to Nicola, play. Nicola said. <laughs> Jason. Boys to you. First of all, Nicola says that would be awesome. Send it to him and see what comes of it. You know, him, Brian Cox. Yeah. And John Troy says, play that little slut, please. She loves everyone. <laughs> mm. Elvis. 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 Oh! Now, let me tell you a story. Because you've inspired me to tell you a thing that I want to tell you. When I was a kid, my first love was Elvis Presley. That's true. And I, I used to, he used to come on the telly periodically. He had, like, sometimes he'd be on top of the pops, you know, because he, he was still having hits in the 70s. And I must have been six, seven years old. And when Elvis came on the telly, top of the pops, oftentimes it was bath time for me. And so I would have had a bath and then it was top of the pops. So I'd come out and if he was on the telly, I'd get all embarrassed if I was, like, in my pyjamas. <laughs> Does that make sense? Do you get it? Yes! All right, good. Uh, yeah, it was it's seven, just so uh, funny. You know, I was embarrassed because I, I was in my pyjamas. So and you loved him. I loved him and I was in my gym and jams. And he was cool. And he was cool back in the 70s, man. You know, not really. Because he was fat Elvis by then. Actually. Yeah, but, you know, you had the 69 special stuck in your head. Kind of, yeah. Anyway, whatever, I loved him. I loved the films, which were horrible. I loved, <laughs> the you know, were terribly really stupid films, but I I loved him. The music, of course, you know, and, I, and it was cultural appropriation. There's a lot wrong with the whole Elvis thing, really. But he was a wonderful singer and musician. So anyway, and he was so handsome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, my mum made me a, a jacket. My mum, and it had <laughs> it had tassels on the sl sleeves, you know, like a, lead, a denim jacket. Tassels on the sleeves, and it had Elvis on the back. And that was, so when, when he came on the telly, I'd have to put my Elvis jacket on. <laughs> on top of your jammies. On top of my gym jams so he could see. <laughs> anyway, a lot of fa favourite Elvis songs, you know. You know, One Night With You, that was such a great song from 69 Special. <laughs> you know that one. I thought Don't was your favourite. Well, that's what I'm about to get to. Oh, sorry. So really, but my absolute favourite Elvis song, when I was a kid anyway, was this one. Don't, 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 don't. That's what you say Each time that I hold you this way Do, 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 do When I feel 
like this And I want to kiss you Baby, don't say don't Don't, 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 don't Maybe I didn't play it. Did I play it well? Was it okay? Yeah, it was oh, great. All right, good. Lewis is blown away, he said. I love that song. It is. It's cool. It's I mean, God. If you think that they down, 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 down. And of course, the boom, 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 boom. That's the Jordan Ayres or somebody, you know, rocking it. Three, four part harmony. Just on our ace. But if you think that this is just a game, I'm playing. If you think that I don't mean <laughs> every word I'm saying, oh, I can probably make it my own. Look, now, look, every, now, you know it's a bit delayed, so people are sending this before you said, did I not play it very well? Oh. Simon Wilson said, wow, with two <laughs> exclamation marks. Lovely, thank Katie you. Katie Moss loved it. Steen has been so glad you're sitting down, because I bet we'd have had some I was nervous. That, do you know why I asked? And I shouldn't, you know what, you should, I shouldn't say that. I should never say, is it all right? It's a bit like when we're having dinner and you say, oh, it's not as good as last time and you've made it. It's not right, is it? You shouldn't say it, should you? I don't think... I'm just... It wasn't. It's just stating a fact. It's not... I'm not saying it's inedible. Don't eat it. You're going to get poisoned. I know, but it's not good for that. You're supposed to be just enjoying it. You don't want to hear... You don't want to hear me say, that's crap, but that wasn't very good. I was a bit nervous. Anyway, that's all the time we've got for today, so... uh... (laughs) Um... Listen. Yeah. You... Oh, yeah, the Jordanaires. I know. He's back at band. Yeah. Did you ever see that thing? Yeah. Uh, there's a there's a comedian, a British comedian, who did a show about the Jordanaires. He's very famous. He's got too many teeth in his mouth. And he's... He's not an old guy. He's probably our age. Or a little bit Is younger. he very camp? No. He's brilliant. And he did a show where he got... He bought a shirt... Simon will remember this. Uh, he bought a shirt, and it was supposed to belong to Elvis Presley, and it was supposed to have been worn by him in a show in uh, in um, in Texas or somewhere in the 1970s or 60s or 50s, probably. And uh, he was trying to figure out if this was the shirt belong- really did belong to Elvis, and he finally met the Jordanaires. And uh, he went to talk to them because it's part of this. It's a trip around. Uh, it's a trip around America, really. The show, you know, and uh, and 
Dylan, you're right about him. If he's our age, he's that old. That means he is old, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, he wasn't always old. Neither was I. So neither were Frank you. Frank Skinner. Frank Skinner, exactly. Frank Skinner's going around America <coughs> and he's and he's trying to figure out if this shirt belongs to Elvis and he meets the Jordanaires and he sits and talks to them. And, is, and, and then all of a sudden, Frank Skinner be, bursts into song and he sings this old, like some sort of a, a spiritual song, a gospel song. And he begins singing this song. And they're obviously t- taken aback. That's not wasn't in the plan for this interview, right? They're very cautious to uh, protect Elvis's name. There's a lot of terrible things said about Elvis, especially towards the end. You know, and I've said a few terrible things just in the last hour. You know, so they're careful to protect his legacy, his memory. You know, and they're good guys. You know, that's what you want from your band. So that they, it they, they wasn't planned, but Frank's going to burst into song, and I'm sure this is on uh, YouTube. You can find it. And he starts singing, and they begin singing with him because they're taken <gasps> aback. And they, and he's and he's got he's singing well. It's well. Like a, probably like a knee jerk reaction as yeah, well. Yeah, and he's singing well. He's really singing well. And they start singing with him. Magic. And he cut and he's like, This is the business. And, you, and now he's singing Google and it. they're singing. And at the end of it, one of the guys says, If you'd have asked us to do that, we'd have said no. <laughs> That's that great. great. Um Gary Margolis, who says he misses you. Yeah, hi Gary. Um once asked if you would play Tempted. Oh yeah, we'll do that, yeah. Squeeze song. That is a magic TV moment worth looking for. Look for, you know, I'd search for uh, Frank Skinner, and Jordan Ayres. Ayres. Yeah, I'm, I'm It's really something. I've actually, somebody's saying Freddie Starr, and Freddie Starr did a thing with them too. Freddie Starr had a good voice, but he kind of pretended to be Elvis. Like, tried to be Elvis. Skinner's not like that. Skinner's cool, you know. But it was really good. It's a wonderful moment, especially as they didn't expect it. Ugh, I'm going to get in tune. That's what I'm going to do. How about that? Please do tip if you can afford it. Very, very nice of you if you do. And you get a personal thank you, of course. And, and, and if you do tip, and you want a copy of The Joy of OK, my last album, you can get one. Just to say you want it. And I'll even draw a penis on it for you in the gold sharpie. But you, you have to ask for that, request it, you know. Or rather, if you don't want the penis, uh, say that. If you don't say anything about a penis, you'll get a penis. That's the rule. It used to be before the Me Too movement. bought a toothbrush, some toothpaste, a flannel for my face, pyjamas, a hairbrush, new shoes and a case, said to my reflection, let's get out of this place, Passage a church and a steeple, the laundry on the hill, billboards and the buildings, memories of it still, keep calling, and calling, Forget it all, I know I will Tempted by the fruit of another Tempted but the truth is discovered What's been going on, now that you have gone There is no other Tempted by the fruit of another Tempted but the truth is discovered I'm at the car park, the airport, the baggage carousel People keep on grabbing, ain't wishing I was well Said it's no occasion, no story I can tell At my bedside empty pocket Foot without a sock Your body gets much closer I fumble for the clock Alarmed by The seduction 
wish that it would stop Tempted by the fruit of another Tempted but the truth is discovered What's been going on? Well, that you have gone, there is no other Tempted by the fruit of another but the truth is discovered I bought a novel, some perfume, fortune over you But it's not my conscience, hates to be untrue Said to my reflection, I said, what is there to do? Oh, oh, yeah. Tempted by the fruit of another but the truth is discovered What's been going on, 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 on Now that you have gone There is no other Tempted by the fruit of another Tempted by the truth in this I've been tempted Thank you. Thanks for requesting that. Whomsoever did that. What have we got other comments in the... Th I saw some comments fly by. Um, just couldn't see the waves. Sorry, I've, I've had to... I'm getting... I'm getting... There's some loose ends I have to tie up before we go to Vegas and I was, and I was doing that. It's naughty of me. Oh, it was Gary that... that uh, it was Gary. Well, if your life's complete, Gary... You yeah. Should, you should leave a very healthy tip. <laughs> yeah, leave us all your money. Um, <laughs> Steve Nisbet says, good upbeat show this week. That Well, yeah, that's what happens when you have a big row before. Yeah, we got out of our system. We blew off a bit of steam before this. But we're, we're going to Vegas, and that should be fun. We don't play. We're not gamblers. Might put five bucks in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's about what? as much. Yeah, that's it. Five bucks. Yeah, we might put five dollars a piece in a machine and I see hate what happens. It. You I know, hate it can't do it. We're not going to get your tips and spend them in Vegas. Here's the trick. Hey, we could make a promise. Send us uh, some money and a bet. Oh <laughs> yeah. Shall we put it on red? And what? And what? We want high rollers only, though. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah. You don't want to do that. Silly. No. There was an English guy that went to Vegas and took his entire life savings. Did you see that? No. Yeah, he took his entire life savings, sold his house, the whole lot, and put it all on red or something, you know, on an even bet. And he won. <laughs> Lucky. Yeah, he went home with a lot of money. and then he, But he, was, he, was, he decided what he was going to do, and he planned it. It's going on the money. He's got his flight home and his hotel, mm -hmm. <coughs> and a few quid to spend on whatever. Um, and he had a job, I think, too. It wasn't. It's like he was going home to a wage, you know. Yeah. But um, he said, "I'm going to put, and if I win, that I'm leaving the room." And he did. He won and left the room, and that was it. Well, yeah. You'd have to, wouldn't you? Yeah. You know, you know what gamblers are like. My father was a terrible gambler, and he would never leave the room because the truth about gambling is they don't like to. They don't like to win. They weren't interested in winning. He was interested in playing. And anyway, when they when my when my father won. Five grand or whatever it was, you know. In the last six months, he'd put 20 grand in the machines. Yeah. So it wasn't a win. It's not a win. So, um, yeah. um, 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 Dylan says, on the squeeze theme, call for cats. Mainly because I'd love to hear you try and sing it in a it. Cockney accent. He doesn't know it, actually. I don't, you know, but you know. I do know, like, um, what's that one? Well, I never thought it would happen with me and a girl from Clapham. I can do a bit of a Cockney. A little bit. I mean, I, I don't know how convincing it really is. Is it? Well, it's all right. It's all right. Uh, yeah. It's all right. What? It's all right. I can do it a little bit. I'm not bad at accents. Depends on what they are. I can't do American. 
Can you do American? You can do. You've got an American, haven't you? Mm-hmm. If I'm highly paid. Is it New York? It c- could be. Come on, do it. No. Nope. Do it. No. Nope. Do it. No. <laughs> do it. <laughs> no, I'm not. Okay. I'm not. If you don't um, want to do it, come on, just a little bit. Steve says he sometimes sings that one up the junction, but there's too many words. There are a lot of words in that. There are, yeah. Um. Okay. There was someone else. Oh, do that that slutty bitch song. Mm. Yeah, I'll do that. Is he still here, John? He says he's in a, he's on his bows. We're on his bow system. She is a body of the club. You know, I've been playing this song for so long. I'm a little. I'm, I'm, I'm a little unsure of it, but uh, I think it's good. Give it a crack for you guys. This song is called She Loves Everyone. If you've got a filthy mind, like John Troy has, you think it's about a girl, a woman who fucks everyone. But it's not like it's not what this song's about. It's about a girl who loves everyone, you see. And it's about my self centered need to be loved more. Than, uh... <laughs> can I tell you something? What? What? When I when I first got sober and I had to sort of do the step thing. Yeah. So the guy that I'm sitting with, George, <coughs> he says, I was talking about my dad and you know how he was a gambler and how he'd left when I was a kid and all this stuff. And he said, so you're telling me really that your father didn't <coughs> didn't love you enough. It felt like he didn't love you enough. Mm. And I said, yeah, that's right. Bless and he you. said, do you think it's possible to love you enough, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> Bastard. True, though. Some truth to it is what I'm trying to say. Worth keeping an eye on, if you may. Okay, here it goes. Love her with my life Only give away My breath to be near her It's not enough for her I know Just to look at her Is suicide And even so She is a little girl at heart She tears the little boys apart She loves everyone I want her to be mine She loves everyone Let me know from time to time That she belongs to no one And no one makes her cry Not anyone I feel as selfish as a child I need her like the lifeblood flowing around me I only crave her with my soul When she smiles it is the end of the rainbow She is a little girl at heart She tears the little boys apart And she loves everyone Wanted to be mine She loves everyone Let me know from time to time That she belongs to no one And no one makes her cry Not anyone She seems different every day survives I try to reach her but she's away 
She had a lover long ago He made her realize The one and one is never one She is so strong and brave and wise She is beautiful As gentle as the breeze she walks upon She is a little girl ah, ah. Tears the little boys apart She loves everyone I want her to be mine She loves everyone Let me know from time to time She belongs to no one And no one makes her cry Is there something you'd like to say? No, I just think, you know. It seemed all right, you know, when I was 25, it seemed like the right thing to say, but now I get that there is a connotation of... Yeah, but he's now You know, saying... if you love somebody, set them free, is the mm -hmm, point, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yet, there is a, there's a need, right? People mm -hmm. have a need. That's why we get together, and, you know. I don't know. It's a very complex thing. Just thinking about it, that's all. Don't really matter. Great song. Really like it. Thank you very much. John says, well thank done you. Me. That song really gets me. Thank you. I've been doing this thing where mm. I'm writing with people. Can I mention it, Aves? <laughs> of course you can Are you can about to uh, say to me? No, I was just saying keep an eye on the time because... Yeah, we're you all know, right. We're all we right. All right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if, we, if we're done here by 2.30 at the least, at the latest... Okay. You know, I'm going to tell you... You've got things to do. Um, Before we leave, a little bit, not a lot. Why don't you do them? Well, because we're doing this. We, you want me to go away? No. <laughs> I don't want you to go Actually, away. Actually, I need to go and walk the dog. Okay, we can walk the dog. I'll yeah. play some songs, muck about. Steve says, stop overanalyzing and play some fucking. Stop overanalyzing. I'm a bloody songwriter. <laughs> play some <laughs> Disney. It's what I do. <laughs> See? she, Mrs. Pickles agrees with me. Um, yeah, I'm just talking about the songs. Somebody said to me, you should talk more about the songs, so I do. And now you say, don't. 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 All right. Can I tell you a joke, then? Do you know the joke about the bees? Is it too long? Yeah, and... It, All right, never mind. Yeah, and it's a certain kind of person that gets it. <laughs> <laughs> One with a sense of humour, I see. <laughs> um... <coughs> Okay, uh, what's my other favourite joke of the of all time? Greg Bishop sent you a joke before saying, for your birthday I'm going to send you a... Oh, it's fucking the thing. He said, for your birthday I'm going to send you a pen that writes underwater and other words too. Very good. Nice one, Greg. <laughs> Let's have more of those stupid jokes. Then I wouldn't have to talk about myself all the time. Just feeling dead air, you know. It's, it's, a, it's an instinct. So... Um, Doing this thing about the writing songs with people, that's fun. If you've got a song or half a song or an idea for a song and you would like me to help you uh, do it, it's turned into a little bit of a business, this, for me. And I love doing it. And I'll always get out of the way of your song. Like, it's your thing. This is your thing. You're expressing yourself. I'll just help you to, uh, you know, empty your wallet, as Ava says. <laughs> no, you've got to, be, you've got, I've got to get paid for it, like, you know. Listen, if you've read Ayn Rand, which I haven't, but hey, it's transactional life, apparently. <coughs> no, it's just a little business, and it's really fun, and the people I've done it with have really enjoyed it. One of the songs that we did early on, uh, um, I did with a couple of girls, a lady that met me at the airport, actually. I was playing music at the airport, and we I wrote, helped them write the song, and then I helped them to record a guitar vocal of it, and now there's a big old, like, full-on 
production deal. I'm going to post it on Patreon to so you can see it. I asked them if it's okay, and they said, yeah. And it's full on, you know, drums and the whole, you know, keyboards and synth bass and all this. That's what they wanted. And, uh, and loads of, um, tons of vocals and a, like, a slide guitar solo. And it's what they want, you know. And I've got a guy who mixes. Uh, and, and of course, the client pays the guy that mixes and pay me. Pays the mixer and he does it. And he is the greatest. So uh, the mixes are always magic too. So it's good. If you want to do it, PM me and we'll figure it out. All right? All right. All right. All right. <laughs> that song it's cool isn't it the little drop d thing i love the drop d the first song i ever wrote with a drop d was this one Fine 
give me one more Sniff of the bottle Keep my foot on the throttle Heel on the well line Got a slide See the road See the road I can still see the white line See the road See the road I swear I saw my life Seen my life go by. Hold me down, I'm improving. Won't you keep me moving? Keep me moving away. One more line, one more collision. I got X ray vision. Oh, I'm in pole position. See the road I can still see the white line See the road See the road Oh I saw my life I see the life go by See my life go by I wanted to cough all the way through that song. <coughs> yeah, so that's the song. It's got that little D. Uh... That drop D thing. If you're making comments, thank you, but I can't. Has the Queen gone transgender? I noticed that there from, uh, from Ed. Yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? She's just old. You know old women, they get beards. Sometimes. I'm afraid Ava did it overnight. She's trying to get rid of it. I think it's all right, though. I like it. And this is my office. So whatever. But I think it's... Uh, I like the Queen being there. Either that or something else. We can't find anything else. We need to replace it. Vegas has great gift shops. And it could be that is where we'll find something if we've got time <laughs> to uh, spend any time gift shopping. Spend some time with my mother. 
Uh, we're driving to Vegas this afternoon. It's uh, it's ten to two right now. Of course, I got my old um, the drop D from uh, John Martin. You know the old. May you never lay your head down. Is that a serious question? What kind of strings do you use? Are you being funny? Are you being daft? Are you taking the piss? Because I will tell you. Okay, I'm just going to take it at face value. I use Diodario EJ16s, always have. And I always smoked Marlboro Lights. And when I go up for Thai food, I always have the... Uh, Yellow chicken, yellow curry with chicken. And when we go for Japanese food, I always have um, the uh, shrimp tempura to start, and then the like shrimp tempura rolls and a couple of yellow tails and salmon. I like salmon. I'm a man of ritual. I like to. I usually have the same thing, you know. And when we go for fish and chips, I always have fish and chips. Mushy peas. Let's have the mushy pea debate. Mushy peas, yes or no? I say yes, but always soaked in vinegar. And what about Megan Duda and Harry Duda? Maybe they'll get a job. Maybe they'll start a cleaning company. I'll employ them. You know, we have, we have a cleaner here once every three months. Come around, do you know, do the get in the places we don't want to go. Uh, I think that'd be good for them. They should start a cleaning company or uh, painting and decorating. Probably quite good at that. I bet she's good at that. Or uh, what else could they do? Like delivery service, he could get a van. She, she can afford to buy him a van, and he could like deliver parcels and stuff. I think that's a very good idea. Am I losing you? I just want. I just think they should do something normal and hang out with normal people. I think it'd be good for them. Okay. What else are we going to do here? Yeah. The that's, that string tuned down is great. It's great for a lot of things. Well, that is a great chord. It's got it. I tune these down as well. For uh, Let It Be Summer and Katie's Car, a few of those. Thing straight, love never turned easy on a plate. We've both been hurt by friends before. We don't believe in faith no more. We said that we'd be free, no strings on you and me. She said it could be, she can't erase it. I saw her face this morning, sure that I was dreaming. It was a smile I could believe in. The sun was shining. Could it be that the night is gone? Cold and lonely, much too long. Cold and lonely, much too long. Please, let it be some. Better put the sun in the sky. Let it be some. And if the day should bring the rain, Hope she will be there again. Love me so completely, to care so indiscreetly. I want to stay in bed today, in case the feeling goes away. It's not the change of season, she is the reason. I saw her face this morning, sure that I was dreaming. It was a smile I could believe in. The sun was shining. Could it be that the night is gone? Cold and lonely, much too long. Cold and lonely, much too long. And now, now please let it be some. Let it be so now. 
Let it be summer, come on, mama. This morning, sure that I was dreaming. There's a smile I could believe, and I know that the sun was shining. Could it be the night is gone? I'm cold and lonely, cold and lonely for much too long. Please let it be summer. When I put the sun in the sky. Let it be summer Please Let it be summer Let it be summer about that <laughs> that's old and that's uh, that's in that weird tuning dad gad you know okay do you have any requests i wonder <coughs> i don't see any um, but uh, I can call this something. Let's just see what's going on here. Because this, I could probably just look at the most recent um, chats if I just to pull this up on my uh, computer. You know, it's a computer over here. It's computing. Can I tell you something? My friend Phil Palapiano was on line this morning, and I'm sure you can find him. Um, I'm sure it's not just streaming. There'll probably be a recording of the show that he does on a Sunday morning. <clears throat> he starts like an hour before me. Phil Parla Piano. P-A-R-L-A. Parla. Piano. Like piano. He's a keyboard player. I would say probably a genius. And a lovely guy. He's played with everybody. And he was talking this morning about a gig that he did with Sir Bob Geldof in, um, at Largo. In uh, in L.A. And Bob just showed up and they sent him the keys and the tunes and the charts. And he Phil, Phil put a band together and he did this song. He, they, they got it all figured out. There were about ten songs. They got it all figured out and, and Sir Bob was mean to them. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I wasn't listening. Bob Geldof was mean to Phil Palapiano. Uh, because he played his song? He played it. He didn't like the way they were playing it, but they just copied what he'd sent. Well... To be honest with you, when yeah. I was in when earlier when I was in the shower and, and Phil was playing it, yeah. I could barely hear it because I was in the shower and I was like, "Oh God, that is no mistaking um, that this is the Boomtown Rats." <laughs> and then, and the, uh, the reason I came in and went, "Who's that?" is because it, you know, it was Phil. Yeah, that's very interesting. Well, that song was written by the keyboard player in the band, actually, in the Boomtown Rats. I think I think Bob wrote the words of Bob's song, but he. Uh, the keyboard player, for, I forget his name now, um, he uh, he wrote the tune. And it starts with that big lick on the piano. Yeah, yeah. That big uh, crescendo thing, you know. <sighs> dog's kicking a water bowl. It must be empty. Yeah. When the dog's bowl's empty, she makes it make a noise like a bell. She rings it like a bell. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a, she'll tap, tap it and it hits the floor and it goes dink and that's how we know 
that the dog needs water. It's nice, isn't it, when you feel like you're communicating with an animal in that way. Oh, I'd love a drink, Cave, thanks. Robinson's black currant juice, whatever it is, summer fruits. Yeah, Don't Like Mondays, that was the song he was playing. Um, Stump the Chump. Well, let's give it a crack, shall we? Because it's possible that I can do it. I've never done it before. I know, that's the thing about it. It's very piano-y, and that's the... It's quite a good Stump the Chump in that way, because we're like... Uh, we're like it's good to do songs that are obviously not guitar songs. Hold on, what's this? I have, there's a, I have a court, I'm a member of a, like a thing, you know, I pay for it. And you you can put in any song and then you can change the key if you want. Um, I don't like Mondays. Some girl killed a load of people, didn't she? And, uh, and, uh, when asked why she'd done it, she said she didn't like Mondays. That's the story behind this song. Was it a school killing? Was it America, Nave? No, it's not in this. Let's see if I put an apostrophe in between the N and the T, see if that helps. Hold on a minute. Search. Oh, yeah, there it is. Look at that. Aha! Oh shit, it's in a weird key. They're always in weird keys because the piano players don't care, do they? What key it is? Guitar players do. It's the key of C though, so I suppose that's. Yeah, but it's the key of C, but it, there isn't a bloody C chord in the whole thing. So try and change the key to something a bit more. I think that's C. Maybe change it to A. I know you don't care. I know nobody cares. What's he saying? He's saying, same chords as I am what I am. Well, it was the way I played it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't. I don't, my bloody computer was asking for a bloody... For a password? Password. I, I don't know. What it All right, can you do in the ghetto instead? In the ghetto, no. Oh. No, because I'm, I'm, I've got fixated now on this. Now I'm obsessed with Dylan's... Uh, request. request. I'm obsessed with Dylan's request. Good line, excellent line. Very good. Hold on. Come here. Is this boring? Well, it might be boring for you, but it's just uh, irritating for me. Just a minute. E chords. Okay. Okay, here it is. I did it. I've done it. Just a minute. Okay. Now that if that key's A, let's see about F sharp. Uh, sharp. G sharp. Try and do it in G sharp. Yes. Ha ha. <laughs> so it's got that that thing. At Silicone chip inside her head. Right. That's it. So let's do it like this. Stump the chump. It's a good one, this. <clears throat> See if I can remember how it goes. The silicone chip inside her head. You switch to overload. Nobody's gonna go to school. Down. The whole day down. went off but it's back on again now good one this all right we're going tell 
Alex machine is kept so clean, types to a waiting world. A mother feels so shocked, mother feels shocked, the father's world is rocked. Sweet sixteen and that peachy keen And so need to admit defeat And they see no reason Cause there are no reason What reasons do you need? Oh, 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 oh Tell me why I don't like Mondays Tell me why I don't like Mondays And why I don't like Mondays Stopped in the playground now And she wants to play with the toys a while The school's out early and we're suing learning The lesson is how to die But the bullhorn crackles and the captain tackles The problems with the hows and whys And he can see no reason Cause there are no reason No, you need to die Oh Oh, 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 tell me why I don't like Mondays Tell me why I don't like Mondays Why I don't like Mondays I want to shoot Oh, the whole day down That's fun. I might add that to the old repertoire. Need to fix it a little bit to find out what I'm really doing, but it's cool, right? Yeah. Um, um, Anybody just, saying something? I'm, I'm, okay, I don't like Monday's a song, but I don't know, like, the song was number one. I'm trying to find out the story. Yeah. I'd be interested. Well, this has come, yeah, Cleveland Elementary School Shooting. All right. A, te a television documentary about the event was titled I Don't, don't Like Mondays. Ah, I don't know whether that's it. How can I? How school shooting sparked Boomtown Rats. I don't know. You know what? Let me f let me um, find out before I start talking about it. <laughs> that, ah, uh, right. The biggest I Don't Like Mondays was in inspired by a school shooting that took place on January the 29th, 1979. That morning, Brenda Spencer... A Brenda. A Good name for a serial killer <laughs> or a shooter of anything. Brenda. It's so like the banality of evil, isn't it? Go on. A 16-year-old with a history of petty theft and violent thoughts opened fire from inside her house at students outside San Diego's Grover Cleveland Elementary School across uh, the street, just down the away. road. Not far from us, really, that. Even closer to Lewis, if he's still watching. Yeah. So In a 15-minute spell, she fired 30 rounds of ammunition from a semi-automatic 22 caliber rifle her father gave her for Christmas. Crikey, what a good idea. Give your kid a semi-automatic for Christmas. <laughs> Principal Burton Rag and custodian Mike Shaw were killed in the attack. Eight children and a policeman were wounded. Okay. Spencer, who had told classmates a week before that, had told classmates a week before that she wanted to do something big to get on TV then locked herself in the house as wow. the SWAT team descended. I mean, you know, of course, it had to be America. I mean, you know. Where is she now, this woman, Brenda? I don't know. Let's... Let What's me, her name? Let me... Brenda, Brenda Spencer. All right, Google Wikipedia, it aves. I am... I'm gonna. Brenda Spencer. I'd love to know what happened to her. Fascinating, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, a couple of people were killed. That's horrible. Really horrible. But at least the kids were all right. Please don't request the kids are all right, because I don't know how to play it. I don't know it very well. So, yeah, that was a good one, that. It was inspired by Phil Palapiano, who does a show before us on Sundays on uh, Facebook Live, but uh, still, 
Oh, yeah, she looks like all those crazies that you see there. like Myra Hindley? N- 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 no, no, but she's got the look of uh, uh, somebody that goes into a school and shoots people. <laughs> well, even in that, about, uh, that, that's when she was that age, is it? I know, she's older than 16 there in that picture. That right, yeah, she does have a look of somebody who's clearly nuts. Yeah. Crikey. And this is her speaking in 93, there's a... There's a YouTube video. Do you want to hear it? No. You no. Don't. <laughs> Watch Vic. that later, though. We'll listen to that in the car on the way to Vegas. <laughs> All right, we're going to split in a minute. I just want to say uh, happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, dear Jason. Happy birthday to you. The jazz, uh, jazz version. That. <laughs> um, I'd just like to add, she was given an indefinite sentence and she's still in prison. Well, she was as September 2020. Sorry, I know you'd gone on to singing about yourself and your birthday. No, that's all right. It's, it's, just, it's fascinating, isn't it? People mm. do things and then that's the, the lives change forever. And of course, the lives of the people, the victims, change forever. Dylan's saying, all in this together to end. Good idea. Good, good why plan, not? Dylan. It's a very good idea. I don't see why not. Um, this is a song about um, death. Listen, you're going to die. You do know that, right? You are. And even, Lar- oh. even if you don't smoke. And Larry Zayden's requesting Scarborough Fair very loudly in capitals. He tends to shout, and that, I must say that's not very appealing to me, Larry. <laughs> you don't reach me very well when you do capitals. <laughs> find Stop it a little, shouting with capitals. Yeah, it feels a little shouty. Scarborough Fair, though, that's an interesting song, isn't it? Have I ever played that song? Yeah. Are you going na, 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 Parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme I live up in that place, huh? Remember me, remember me to one who lives there. She once was a true love, true, true love, true love of mine. Remember to make me come. Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. I'll leave it for next time. We'll do this one. Ah, Nicholas says she was playing that on the flute just before this started today. (laughs) Very good flute song. Um, What's that song we wanted? All in this together. Yeah. All in this together. So, what's the song about, you know? The fact we're all going to die, so we should be nice to each other because it's. Life's short, man. Ooh, I'm 55 tomorrow. 55 tomorrow. So we're going to Las Vegas to sort of cheer me mum up. We're going there this afternoon. We'll spend the evening there. I don't know what we'll do. Probably dinner with my brother. And then tomorrow morning, breakfast with somebody. And then tomorrow night we're going <laughs> Me, out. I hope. Yeah. Tomorrow <laughs> night we're going out for dinner. I've got to go to me to the car dealership, to my brother's car dealership. Oh, well, I'll stay in the hotel and hang out it's and boring, do something isn't it? nice. I'm going to, yeah. I don't want, what, what do you want they me to They messed up my bloody, no, they messed up my bloody registration. And now I've got to go back and sign something so they can get the car registered. It's right, be a pain in the ass, but it's not my brother's fault. It's just it's bloody DMV. Hey, you need to drive. I'm knackered. Everyone. Oh, we should put some reverb on. So, yeah. Thanks for watching and listening and everything, everybody. Please do share this with your friends. Share. Just hit share, if you would. And um, tip if you can. And join Patreon if you like. And When I was out earlier, yeah. Stee said... Between this song and the one about traffic lights, you're a fucking menace on the road. What song were you singing? The Road. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) 
Everyone in here is gonna die. They can't say when. You know we will. Sure as hell, have no idea why. You say you do. It might get you killed. Not saying nothing we did not already know. There comes an end to all of us, children. I mean, it's always nagging somewhere in your soul, like an unpaid promise to a long lost friend. Sing along, sing along. To my morbid little song, it's not singing nothing new, nothing clever. Give me five, give me five. Nobody's leaving here alive. We must remember that we're all in this together. And just because it's obvious. And monochrome That doesn't mean You will recall it When you need it I mean it's always Lagging somewhere to your bone And it doesn't mean You really can believe It now Sing along, sing along To my morbid little song It's not singing nothing new Nothing clever Give me five, give me five. Nobody's leaving here alive. Oh, remember that we're all in this together. I am really not a prophet or a soothsayer. I'm not a guru or the savior or the pied piper. Most of my brilliant little schemes. Been a failure, but I'm heading for the end, like you, neighbor. Tell you this, 'cause I'm not graceful in my life. I wish that I had more compassion for my brother. We really knew there'd be a finish line. Might behave like we was grateful for each other. Sing along, sing along to my golden little song. Not singing nothing new, nothing clever. Give me five, give me five. Nobody's leaving here alive. Well, remember that we're all in this together. Give me five, give me five. Nobody's leaving here alive. We must remember that we're all in this together. Excellent. All right, we're off to Las Vegas. Viva Las Vegas! Viva Las Vegas! That's Elvis, isn't it? I think. So we're off to Vegas. We're going to go see my mother. And uh, it's a bit like we're not really going to Vegas. It's, like, it's like saying you're going to London and only going to um, Finchley. No, 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 no. Worse than that. Edgware. Edgware. <laughs> Don't say bad things about Edgware. That's where Dylan's from, I think. But yeah, it's like, it's like saying you go to London and you don't even pass through London. Is Edgware North? It's north, isn't it? Yeah, of course it, it is. So it's like it's like saying you're going to London, but you only go to Edgware and you never get to Westminster or Soho or, or you know, with the West Edgware's, End. Or... Edgware's where you park and get the tube. Like, oh, I'm done driving now. Right, right, right. Very res parking residential. Here, I'll get the tube you know. in, yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just residential. Very sort of nice. Thing. Yeah. Anyway, that's what we're doing. Maybe we'll do a uh, video, a live video of when we approach Vegas and you can see the strip if you really care about that kind of thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Are we going to go to the strip? Why would we go to the strip? No, I don't think so. There's nobody there anyway. Nobody that we know lives I'm there anymore. And you, we can't be gathering. Yeah. No, no, I don't want to go to bloody 
casinos. Because yeah. if you're spending time at casinos in Vegas, you're not taking this COVID thing very seriously. That's my theory. What do you think? I know I agree. Even with the mask on. You don't want to be sat there touching all those slot machines, do you? Oof. No, I think they have people wandering around wiping them, but it's well, not good enough, Randomly. Is it? Yeah. What you have to do is follow, follow somebody around who's wiping and just sit at one that they've just wiped. <laughs> no, that's true. Or take your own wipes. Take your own wipes. That's the answer. Okay, very good. Um, thank you for watching The Pageant of the Mattress. We love you very much, and we're delighted that you do this every week, and I hope you're okay. And if you need us for anything... Songwriting tips or uh, just personal uh, hygiene uh, advice, anything <laughs> like that, just contact us via, uh, what do you call it, messenger. <laughs> you know, you can call us anytime. All right. Take care. Love you all. All right. Anything you'd like to say, Ave? No, no. That see it? you next week. Well, see well, you, we'll, yeah. have we'll have Tales of Vegas. Yeah, we'll see you next week for sure. I wonder if there's any play out music that's here. Let's say, free, license free, uh, what kind of music would you like to hear, Ava? Banjo. License free banjo music. I'll put banjo. <laughs> Is that like hip hop with a banjo? Royalty free banjo music, here it comes. Oh, funny you should play banjo music. Why? Because Simon Wilson said you should look up, but look up, um, with the teeth, the comedian Frank Skinner's Frank Skinner's movie about George Formby. Oh, that's interesting. Yes, yes. And we should, and we should, and we will. It'd be very interesting. That. Thank you for the tip. I'm gonna write that down. Okay, here we go. <laughs> no. That's too good. I expected something rubbish. Thank you.